Hi, so slightly a different comfy video this time, slightly more insane. Um, a lot of my videos come out of hitting a problem and uh, wanting to want to find and looking for a way around it. And th th this problem was a particularly knotty one. Uh, there's lots of upscalers around and I don't really like any of them. And I certainly don't like what they do to illustrated type images because they're very focused on, on photographs. Well, I'm very unfocused on photographs, so so there you go. So I I really don't like what the upscalers do. I, I, they sharpen them to hell, and the upscaling isn't very good either. You know, there's ultimate, pen, penultimate, and super ultimate, and whatever. But they 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 mostly do a, a pretty horrible job, over over sharpened or over smoothed, or or they, sometimes they manage both at the same time, which is quite a feat. So what I've done is build a workflow that is does a much better upscale for a start. And not only that, if um, you can adjust it <laughs> a lot along the way uh, without redoing it all, because the ultimate upscaler could take half an hour or more to churn through a 4,000 odd pixel image, and um, which is rather a long time. Uh, this will do it. The last one I did wasn't very large, but it was 4,000 pixel image, but it did it in uh, 23 minutes, which isn't too bad, really, from scratch. So what we'll do is we'll start at the beginning here and we'll work our way across. Although it looks very complicated, I should point out a couple of things first of all. It looks very complicated. It's actually made up of repeated units. There's one there, one there, and another one there. So there's two, three repeated image, three repeated units. You see this shape here. That's just the same shape again and again. So though it looks complicated, it it uh, not isn't necessarily that complicated. And these in turn are made up of three duplicated workflows as well. So this junk over here, which is the upscaler, looks very impressive, but it is actually quite simple in principle slightly more complicated in practice as I've found anyway we'll start at the beginning how you make your image now this lot over here will adjust to whatever image size you put in so this is my input image here it's intended to work with image to image not with text to image if you want to use text to image you need to put an empty image in here uh, for it to start with because all of the numbers all of the mathematics behind it is working off this box here. These are the numbers that feed into all of the rest of the workflow. So the way this image is being made is just a bit of fun really. This is IP adapter, Matteo's wonderful invention, which is styling. This is styling the image. Uh, I, I'm not going to go into this as a separate, I shall do a separate video on this at some point once I've discovered all that. Essentially what this does is slap four images together to make this grid, which will be then put through the adapter, and this will produce inferences that go into the first generation. This section that makes the image is very boring. <laughs> it's, just, it's just image to image. There's absolutely nothing in there of, um, that, that is new, clever, or, or of any difference. This is a completely standard image to image setup. The only difference is that this image is being resized to a very specific size to, for the, to go to the flow here. And the image needs to be, for this process to work, divisible by eight. So you've got to make it divisible by eight. It might be work with divisible by four, I haven't tried it. I think divisible by eight to, uh, and obviously it can't be below, uh, below 768, I don't think it'll really work very well. So this setup here has churned out this image which is a rock fantasy sort of image. And the next thing to do is to upscale that, which we do up here. So a first upscale. So this upscale, which is again a completely standard image to image, has an image resize and the image is made 1.5 bigger. So 768, that's 11 something or other. So this is just a bit bigger than 1024. So then we come to the interesting bit. This image here is cropped into altogether nine pieces, but in three rows, three horizontal strips are taken across this image. And that horizontal strip is broken into three this way. 
So this here is the top row, if you can see. You check the image on the left here. Top left, so that's the middle bit, and that's the right hand bit. So this is a step across, and all they all overlap. Can you see that they overlap? And we're going up twice in scale. So we're doubling in size. And we're increasing in size by using, take one of these apart. So this crops out our section, in this case, the top left section, top left. It upscales with a model twice. So the image is now twice the size it was. So it's two, three, something or other, I don't know. Anyway, it's a couple of thousand pixels across this. And it's just rendered with a denoise of 35 at eight steps. It's rendered just that section at a higher res. So you see it's gone very frilly up there. And it's done that to each one in turn. So it's taken a strip out of here and resized them in three sections that overlap. And then when that has produced the image, which is here, the images are composited together with this node, with a mask, and they're composited together automatically. So that's one of these sections. Now, the next thing is, how did that mask happen? As you see, there's a mask maker here, which makes a mask. And here we get into the mathematics. And I'm sorry, there is mathematics. So here we have a bunch of maths nodes. You don't really need to understand how they work. What they do is produce from the original image size, which is here, get image size. That's coming down, I'll go over here, show you. That's coming down from our original image. So the numbers of this, the 768, 768, are going down this pipeline and then being processed through this. There's two strands of processing because it needs to do not square images. So it'll do any proportion images provided the sides are divisible by eight. All you need to know really is that this, this produces the numbers that go into all of the crops here. So you see the numbers are color coded. So this turquoise relates to these numbers. So this number here, which is going in is 576. So you see that comes out there, 576. So that telling it to make a 576 crop. And the other one is also 576 because we're square. And that's telling it to make the other 576 crop. So it's doing the calculations from the original image and putting the numbers into the image crop. So I've made the outputs of the image crop into inputs. You can do that. You right click on here. You say convert width to widget, width to widget, etc. Convert Y to input. So you can convert any of these widgets here, sliders, any of the sliders to inputs. And I have done that there because I, I didn't want to be adjusting the numbers every time I did it for every single proportion. So I automated it essentially. And those numbers are used up here as well to make a mask. You, you really don't need to know how it does it. But um, what this does is essentially from a empty image, empty black image, it composites a black shape onto a white one and then blurs it and makes a mask. And then there we go back into being a mask there. We feed that back in here and that does the join. So that does the join. The join is pretty good. Sometimes you can spot it. It's quite hard to spot actually. I think it'll be about here. So that uh, tower might be a bit doubled. Not really. It's usually very good. I can't see any join at all. Sometimes with uh, the edges of friendly architecture, you can see a join. But as I'll come to later with this method, that can be corrected quite easily. So for example, actually there's a good example here. Uh, I might want, not want my, I rather like my clouds going frilly, but I might not want my clouds to go frilly. In which case, so I can change the denoise just on this one. So you see here, I've got a denoise 35. If I took that to 25, I don't think it will do funny clouds. And if I, at the end, wanted to change that, it will only reprocess that one. It won't reprocess a whole lot. It'll only reprocess that one, which saves just a huge amount of time if you want to update your image. Okay, so that's one of these modules explained. And the other three are exactly the same. There's no difference in them at all. And this maths unit here feeds the numbers into everything. So if I put a different shaped image in here, all these numbers will automatically adjust. I should put the workflow in so you can fiddle with it. I warn you, fiddling with it, fiddling with it can produce strange results. But as I'll, I'll go over the things you can fiddle with. This number here and this number here and this number here will just 
we'll just uh, make an image there quickly so we can see the mask. So there's the mask, as it is, does it very quickly. So that's my mask. So there's the soft edge. Uh, this, now these numbers here decide how big the soft edge is. So if I change this to 300, I change this to 150, and I change this to 75. If I click on there, the mask changes shape. So you might want to do that. That's it. And also, if you, it, it will have, as I did that, it re, it had updated the entire image in that time, which is pretty good. So I'll change that back, otherwise it'll, I'll forget. For those who are interested, interested, I'll explain the maths nodes. So the 400 here is the size, the black, the black shape you see on the mask is deciding the size of that. So it's taking this empty image, resizing it, and then compositing it back over the original image and inverting it. So it's making a black square and then compositing it over a white square. That's all it's doing. And it's taking this, this empty image is an automatic batch and it makes just a black image. As you see, the color is set to zero, that means black. And then the blur node is not blurred until the very end. So if we look at it before the blur, there it is before the blur. So these three sections are all the same and these numbers from here and the mask are all piped across. They're all piped across with reroutes. So you can see the mask coming in here from the mask. These are the numbers coming up from the math, from the math box down there. These are the numbers coming up and so forth. So we just rinse and repeat. Then finally, when we've got these one, you see we've got our strips of imagery. We have three of these now, overlapping rectangles that if we go back to our original image, these are horizontal strips, a top one, a bottom one, and then a middle strip. And you can see it's rendered them here. It's rendered them into three strips, the top, top one, middle one, and bottom one. So though it looks hugely complicated, it's not really. And then we do the same thing here. There is another mask builder that makes a horizontal mask from the same numbers. See, here's the numbers being piped in. And that composite the three strips together. So this composites the three strips together. And this is our mask from that mask maker. This mask maker is a little bit more complicated, but the same. Because I leave the um, vertical one as standard and then I adjust for width. You could do it the other way around, but it's just easier to adjust to width. But it can do, it will do portrait or anything you want, really. And that takes these three strips and it joins them up into this up image. And then as a final, we do uh, upscale with model, which sharpens it a little bit. Ah, oh, you can see... Uh, you can see a join there. Excellent. I was hoping to find a join. So you can see a couple of little artifacts. You see the edge here? And there's a there's a ghost and a bit of a dome there. And quite honestly, there's a, <laughs> if you would bother, I would hardly bother. It's it's a Photoshop. It's quite hard to find uh, defects, really. You see there's a little tiny one there. But with this method, you don't have to fix that. You can fix that so easily. All you do is go back. All these images have been saved, you see. So all you do is go back and get that one <laughs> and it will drop in perfectly. And that's true with any of the little glitches. Most of them, I really wouldn't bother hardly doing it, any of that really. But, uh, but if you want to, if you're a real mad perfectionist, then there you go. Go at it. Here's a, another advantage of this method, of course, is that um, if I want, uh, if I felt my building here was not of high enough, not clean enough in its detail, then I can have a look at um, how it was. Then I can send it round again by chopping the right sized bit out of there and then putting it back in here to go through this lot again. So you can see the improvement. And then in Photoshop, I don't bother making specific masks. In Photoshop, you can drop the two together and uh, it'll be a perfect fit. I felt this building was a little bit too um, undecided with sort of random, um, you see how it is when it's finished, it looks pretty good. It had too much random AI stuff in it. So I sent it around again and you can do that with any part of the image, obviously, that, um, and it, and that is especially useful if you've got um, figures, small figures. And, and so on you can you can cut them out and send them round again <laughs> okay i shall do a few uh, comparisons at the end and i should reiterate uh, oh i actually missed one node which is very handy <laughs> so 
I should actually I thought I'd finished but I haven't so this is extremely important this turns on and off the groups so we turn everything off and this is a great strength of this process you don't have to run the whole lot at once so if I turn on the IP adapter and I turn on the main process I can make my initial image drop back all of this has been turned off so I can make my initial image here without running the whole lot and indeed I can run only of this in stages I don't have to run the whole lot so if we uh, wanted to put something berserk in here let's put something berserk in just for fun it'll show how this module works. so we'll put in something silly so we'll put in a weird fractal have a look at that <laughs> you think the clouds were funky before <laughs> I think they'll be more funky now so what I'm getting at here is this section to make our initial image and to you know get something that I mean you know this is just upscaling we need first of all something that's worth upscaling so we cue that prompt so here we are back and that's what it's done which is rather nice actually not as funky as I expected do we want it more funky yeah we want it more funky of course we do want it more funky so if I uh, up the denoise it'll go more extreme 75 so as that took 40 seconds to do you can afford to play in this area you 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 can you can try out lots of variations and lots of um, different seeds and so forth until you get an image that you like before you send it on to the rest and we'll show the I'll show the next stage and just to show how you you can control every stage and you don't have to run through the whole lot repeatedly so there we go more architectural madness and the same is true for the refine so what we can do we can turn the first refine pass on enable refine go yes we don't need any of the math for this first two stages so we don't need to turn the math on until you start the upscale and this here we can control how much it's changed so this is an image to image using the image you just made down there and it's a straight image to image with an ordinary upsize rescale image we're going one and a half so here as well you can afford to do this as many times as you want and you can you can make it change the image a lot you can make it change you can you can go up to uh, we'll do it and all of these um, all of these units are running with the same LORAs and the same prompt here's the prompt being piped about you see the prompts here positive and negative prompts are being piped across from here so these are the original prompts so the conditioning is being plumbed around which brings another possibility out you could put an adapted prompt into any of these sections here if you wish so if you uh, perhaps were having trouble with the clouds and you wanted to take out some of the architectural stuff you could just make a prompt to go in here uh, you, you you don't necessarily have to have the prompt uh, the same prompt running throughout it's, it's not really required so we'll run that and see what uh, 55 will be too much i think it'll change it around too much but maybe not we'll cue that so there you go big change so with this method you can do that I can put this huge change in and at only a minute and 20 seconds um, you can afford to you can afford to play around with this and get what you what, what you something you like so you see because we increase the denoise bring it all up you can see it's quite a difference okay I think that has covered everything I'll put some uh, some of the things I've made with it I'm going to do some comparisons so here we are with some examples I'm afraid I had some, some mad Baroque moments and these these strange uh, shapes are caused by um, IP adapter and putting fractals in them so you see the resolution and detail is pretty good this is a huge image so here's another one this is putting uh, Tiepolo in <laughs> again more Mar bad he's got a haircut hasn't he uh, more Baroque madness but um, the way it's upscaled it is I, I rather like because it does the uh, illustrated stuff a, a great deal better than any other way of upscaling and you can sort of see this on the Venetian ceiling couldn't you and uh, see the architecture is, is is very clean and good this is actually the one that started it off because because uh, I, I wanted this quite big which wasn't so easy and of course it has lots of little people the rather tall chap there that needs an edit but for the most part the people are about right for the size of image 
That's another one. Always with a, any image with a small figure is a challenge. And as you see, she is pretty good. Uh, there have been no edits on this. I would, I would um, finesse the hands, but generally we're pretty good. And a miracle here. It's even got the numbers right on the clock. Look at that. Well, almost. <laughs> Two threes. But I, I reckon, I reckon uh, the AI needs points. Points for getting that right. Then I, I did some, uh, the, I did, the first ones were all square. And then I did some landscapey ones with uh, more, more fractals in the background causing these um, swoopy clouds and stuff. You can see a few joins. There's a little glitch there. But generally, figure is quite good. Generally, pretty nice. Here's something completely different. Uh, I, I did think it would fail on on uh, faces because you know they're they're quite hard to hard to um, upscale, certainly in tiles. But uh, but as you see, she's pretty nasty all the way in. Here we go. You see those fractals going crazy up here. But um, once again, I I won't carry on going zooming in. It gets boring. But uh, we got very nice uh, rational architecture and everything. All the statues and bits and bobs like that all look very nice indeed. And again, we have we have no glitches where it went together at all. You, I, you can't find the join. There's no join at all, to be fair. Another street scene. It was a street scene that, that, that really started me off. So you see here again, we have very good resolution. Num even, it's even almost managed the number plate there. Some of it's a bit uncanny valley, but, um, but pretty good generally. And here we go with this one that you saw me uh, refining the building itself. And uh, as you see, it all fits in absolutely perfectly. So this is um, an Artable Upscale. It took uh, it's 6,000 pixels of grass and it took um, nearly an hour to do. And it's pretty good. We zoom in, which is pretty good, 6,000 pixels. However, uh, my one took um, 15 minutes, i.e. a quarter of the time, and it looks like this. You can all write to me and say you prefer the Ultimate Upscaler one, but uh, I think there's no comparison really. This method is many times better uh, than the Ultimate Upscale. Not only that, four times faster. But uh, there you go. So as usual, I will put the workflow into the words underneath and you can try it yourself and tell me I'm wrong. Okay, I hope that was interesting and uh, informative. Thank you very much for watching.